This is Paul Glumas with uh, General Welfare Presents. Today is the 14th, right, of January, the 14th of January. Um, we've had a little snow in the Seattle area, and of course, that generally uh, causes a lot of nervous tension in the population. Uh, probably more so for Seattleites than the nervous tension being caused by uh, the United States being on the brink of of an all-out war with Iran. Well, that didn't happen yet, and uh, it appears that both Iran and Donald Trump pulled back from the brink. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on behind the scenes that we can't see. There's there's all kinds of back channels shuttling back and forth and also the role being played by Vladimir Putin who uh, has invited alongside uh, 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 Assad have, has invited um, Trump to come to Damascus and have a Damascus road conversion. I guess that's a that's kind of a humor. It's kind of a Russian humor maybe uh, about St. Paul making a Damascus road conversion. They're asking Trump to make a Damascus road conversion. Of course. Now To give you a sense of the magnitude of what is going on that you can't see because it's not reported in the media, as we are looking at the incredible danger of war and the incredible disintegration of U.S. power in the world, and and also incredible confusion about Trump, where he's coming from, what he's going to do, and what everything else is going on. A new world is coming into being, which could very well emerge, provided we don't have a nuclear war. And the best way I can describe that new world is to take you back to the revelations um, uh, that Hussein Iskari put on the LaRouche Political Action uh, Committee site, and also the revelations that the uh, interim Prime Minister of Iraq, uh, Al Mahdi, Al uh, revealed. Back in, you know, Iraq is a destroyed country, it's, it's a completely destroyed country. It has oil, and it has a relatively educated, skilled workforce. But otherwise, it's a completely destroyed country. Okay. Food has to be imported. Almost everything has to be imported. And the oil revenues are used to import these things. But, but the infrastructure is destroyed. The society is destroyed. And there are profound uh, uh, Rifts between the Kurds, the Shias, and the and the Sunnis, with the Shias being the the majority. So, what Al Mahdi, the Prime Minister, did, he, he signed a memorandum of understanding back in September with the Chinese, and the following arrangement uh, was done. And this is a template for the future, even though it did not succeed in being implemented. That whole process got destroyed because Al Mahdi's government was destroyed by demonstrations and the firing on the demonstrators by the Shiite militias, leading to his forced resignation. And the only reason he is the interim prime minister is because he's a, he's he's a caretaker. But what was done was an agreement was uh, a memorandum of understanding was signed with the Chinese, wherein a portion of the oil being imported from Iraq by China would the sale of that would be placed in a sovereign Iraqi fund and that sovereign Iraqi fund 
would o- would only be allowed to use that f- for infrastructure. And then a Chinese insurance, uh, a state insurance entity would then guarantee loans backed up by that fund to build the infrastructure in Iraq. And the amount of loans that could be generated would be in the order of 10 times the uh, the, billion, the, the few billions that would be in that fund initially. And as that fund grew, you could, you could leverage it 10 times. Because you have that fund backing up the the infrastructure projects. Now, this is the principle that Hamilton had for the National Bank. The first and then later the second National Bank. This is the idea. You use the revenues coming into the country, you place them with the National Bank. A portion of those revenues become the basis for leveraging co-participation loans in the building of infrastructure. The same thing happened in Germany after World War II, where the Marshall Fund, Marshall Plan money went into a infrastructure investment bank and it was used to leverage the reconstruction of Germany in the same way. This is Hamiltonian economics. This is Lyndon LaRouche economics, which Lyndon LaRouche uh, uh, calls oil for technology. This is what it means. Any country with a significant raw material export can take a portion of those raw materials and uh, revenues from those raw materials and establish a fund that, that can work the same way. The United States could do the same thing internally. Uh, A fund could be established in the United States. The the Chinese could invest in that fund. Others could invest in that fund. And you could have a fund that would essentially uh, be expanded 10 times for infrastructure development. But that's not going to come from directly from the private sector. Th- those investments then create the basis for the private sector, the, the contractors and so forth. But this is the principle that would have gone into effect in Iraq. But this very idea of, of a credit system, because this is an example of what LaRouche calls a credit system, is a threat. To the, to the international financial system. Why? Because the international financial system is composed of two parts. One is the physical economy and the other is this Ponzi scheme of debt. And more debt chasing more debt. And derivatives are used to leverage this whole process. So, and this system will collapse unless you increase the amount of available capital to that system. But none of the credit created for, for that system, which is this huge increasing bubble in the quadrillions, can, is completely decoupled from the price earnings ratio. In other words, it's completely de- decoupled from the physical economy, but it, it is demanding more and more be put into it. And thereby it's competing for funds from any productive investment. Any productive investment in the United States or Europe or anywhere else is competing with the demands of this bubble, of this financial bubble. Lowering interest rates is how they keep the bubble afloat because then you have to refinance at almost no interest rates. So you're, you don't have to, so it actually, or increasing the, um, the cyber, uh, the c- computing power of computers can also increase the ability to keep it from collapsing. And every night, 
there is an interbank uh, lending that has to be uh, uh, that the Federal Reserve and other central banks have to pump money in to keep it from freezing so that the banks can can, can lo loan to each other because this this debt is running out here you gotta cover it over here and then that one's running out and then you gotta cover it over here so this this moving money around through the interbank lending system is the, is how the thing works you're essentially leveraging it's like it's like you cash it you know like you you cash a check and before it, it it bounces you have another check but there was no money there it's just you're just doing this this kite this kind of leveraging process and you keep it going and the Federal Reserve has to constantly come in and other central banks have to constantly come in to keep it going and it just keeps going and but it demands more and more of the uh, flow of funds in the physical economy to service this thing. So this is what they call financialization, where instead of where you have an income stream coming into a particular, uh, in a particular system, and then you, you bundle that into f something that you then sell as a financial instrument. This is called financialization. This is how the whole thing works, and it's totally integrated it's the entire world uh, uh, is t tied into this except those nations which are not which are only minimally participating in this and, and, and one of those is Russia another one is China another one is India and there are other nations that are not participating in this but it's the collapse of this which could collapse everybody so and it could it, it China and Russia might emerge, but it would be a disaster for everybody, including the Chinese and the Russians and everyone. So, so this whole process is going on. So what was being proposed between Iraq and China, what would be the template for how you would develop any country in the context of this global system? But that's competing with that global system. And either the kind of thing that we're talking about between Iraq and China becomes the norm between all the countries that are currently uh, on the Belt and Road are connecting, being connected up in the Belt and Road. This would be the template. This would be the template. This is a LaRouche template. This is a Hamiltonian template. And it's amazing, uh, you know, and, and meanwhile, where are the Iraqi uh, oil reserve monies being held? Well, they have a reserve in the, at, at an account in the Federal Reserve for approximately th uh, $30 billion. And every month, $3 billion comes out to pay for the Iraqi government, its services, feeding, whatever. And this $30 billion dollar fund keeps being regenerated by oil revenue so when so when you you put, buy Iraqi oil that's where the money goes in the dollars that's where the money goes it goes into this Federal Reserve account but that account is not isn't being used for anything infrastructurally it's just sitting there in the Federal Reserve the Federal Reserve is not using that account to leverage loans to develop Iraq so you can see the hysteria that would be generated in the city of London and Wall Street over this proposed memorandum of understanding, which would essentially open the door for Iraq to become developed and freeing itself from this of grip of, of, of Wall Street and the city of London because they have control over the Iranian, I mean, uh, the Iraqi oil um, funds. So, and that fund has been in place since 2003. So this is an aspect of the situation that you wouldn't necessarily hear about, but it's nonetheless important to understand that what China and Iraq were contemplating could be used everywhere in the world. It could be used with the United States. It could be used with Mexico. It could be used with any of these countries. Um, it's, 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 but 
so there is a virulent effort to try to stamp out any such developments but this is what is is put not only potential but it's in a form of actual f functional reality in the sense that if you're going to develop that's how you're going to do it and the fact that the Chinese attempted to have that relationship with Iraq sh tells you that the Chinese understand that that's how you're going to do it you're going to do it in the way Hamilton and LaRouche uh, would have done it so that's a very important point because if you know that that exists, that functionality exists, if you were to have Trump, Xi Jinping, and Putin meeting on the, these questions, then, <coughs> then it's a question of how you actually resolve these situations through economic development. This is the method you would use. And, and Wall Street would be on a collision course with the president of the United States, with the president of Russia, with the president of China, and the city of London would be on a collision course. So you have a collision course between these two different paradigms. One is a plundering system <coughs> of financialization, and the other is a uh, is actually a, a credit-based system. These are two different systems. One is a monetary system. The other is a credit system. It could be more stark that that's what you're dealing with. So these are some of the not well developed in the media issues that are at the center of the crisis in the Middle East and the crisis between Iran and the United States. Why is there a crisis between Iran and the United States? Because uh, Iran is not going to be uh, subjugated. Iran has to be subjugated because they're not going along with the system. And now Turkey isn't going along with the system. And now that there's a big issue on Turkey. Uh, so the, the, this whole area is the fulcrum not only of control for the for the, uh, the crossroads in terms of infrastructure and development, but it's also the, uh, uh, the wars that have been generated out of that region have been the effective way of disrupting any possible different system, any possible different economic system, which would naturally come into play. And then this goes back to 1975, when Lyndon LaRouche met with the leadership of Iraq, and put forward these kind of plans back in 1975. These kind of oil for development plans. These kind of, we call it the Oasis plan. So back in 1975, exactly, roughly 45 years ago, was when LaRouche put these kind of projects on the table and this kind of way of financing them through the oil revenues and the oil for technology perspective. So this is, so this is, this is the alternative system. And it's well known that that's the alternative system. And all this disruption that's been going on, all these wars that go back to Brzezinski and Samuel Huntington and Bernard Lewis to use mercenary armies and religious, uh, funded religious uh, uh, actors to disrupt this whole thing, it's been going on since around that same time, since about 1975 is when all of this was planned out to prevent the natural tendency for a Hamiltonian, uh, LaRouchean perspective to emerge in the Middle East. And for those 45 years, the, the, the fight has been to try to convince the leadership of Europe and the United States that this is in their interest. But now China's on the scene. And China is convinced. That's the difference. LaRouche met with the leaders of Europe, the leaders of the United States. He met with, uh, uh, he organized Lopez Portillo, Indira Gandhi, all these different people, and they all agreed, this is how what you had to do if you're going to develop any part of the world. Zulf, Zulkifar Bhutto of, 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 of Pakistan agreed. 
you know, the many other leaders agreed. Mahathir of Malaysia at that time and currently agree. But how are you going to do it? You do it this way. You do it the Hamiltonian way. You do it with a credit system. And that example of, of China and Iraq is the best example of what, how a credit system could be used to develop a country, provided you have a country that can provide uh, the means to develop. The United States could have become the greatest superpower in the planet economically had they followed this perspective. The industrial expansion of the United States developing Mexico south alone would have created a massive re industrial power of the United States. Instead, it was taken down. Well, it was taken down for what? For a monetary system, for a financialization system for a speculative system, for cheap labor, for profit. There's no profit. There's no profit, ultimate profit in slavery. Any kind of system like that where there is cheap labor or slavery ultimately results in a destruction of the physical capacity of a society. Slavery didn't create any wealth. It, it, it destroyed wealth. You know, people go around saying, <coughs> America was built on the back of slaves. No. America was built on the back of those who fought slavery and created an industrial transformation. That's how America was built. It wasn't built on slavery. Slavery didn't build the United States. It actually depletes the productive power of a society. And this is another example of the fraud of modern economics, of, 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 of neoliberal economics. They, you know, supply and demand, marginal utility, the magic of the marketplace, you know, all of that is crap. That's a speculative system. It's not an economic, it's not American. It's not the original American system, which, which is now facing Trump. Trump's going to have to go there, or, or that, it, Trump is going to have to go there at some point, because it's, the, the financial system is unsustainable. Now, very interestingly, in this context, the tr a trade deal is being signed between the U.S. and China. I mean, the Chinese are committing to purchasing $200 billion annually of U.S. products. Seventy-five of those are, are products, manufacturing products. That's, the tra that's part of the trade deal. In other words, the Chinese are trying to hold up the U.S., while these changes are taking place. But this is the world we're going into. However, you are about to be treated most likely to another round of, of the drama of the coup, the drama of a continuing process of assault on, on the president in the impeachment uh, process, which is probably looks like it's not going to be dismissed so now you're going to have to watch all these assholes uh do this thing you know sanctimonious moral thing to do you know with no no evidence of anything just just more of the same crap you saw with the whole earlier impeachment and only this time it's uh, on the senate and and the, the the republicans don't necessarily uh support trump there some do some don't so the stilettos are getting sharpened to stick in Trump's back during this whole process. And they're going to try to wear the U.S. population down uh, so that they accept uh, Trump's uh, impeachment or resignation or whatever. So this is, the, this is where we're headed. And it is absolutely the case that, um, that the that the assassination of Soleimani by, by the U.S., which was supported by Trump, uh, has to do with the fact that we have been at war with Iran, and the leading person was Soleimani. He very effectively uh, has, was very effective in his creating these asymmetric war capabilities using citizens' militias. He's very effective doing this. So his assassination, which was a big mistake by the President of the United States, nonetheless, 
doesn't resolve the situation that the U.S. has lost the war in, 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 in Iraq and Syria. They are not going to be able to control Iraq or Syria. They need to leave. And if they don't leave, they, they're, going to, they're going to be punished. They're going to be punished. They're going to be attacked. And they need to leave. There's no reason for them to be there. And uh, if they want to retaliate against Iran, they can do so. But the only way they're going to defeat Iran is with a nuclear, uh, a limited nuclear war. And I said last week that, that, that that's probably what has been planned. Uh, I, whether Trump wants to go to a limited nuclear war and thinks he can get away with it or not, I doubt it. So, so that's the situation that, that we're in. And the impeachment process is, is, is driving this whole thing. So it's one, the financial system, the impeachment process, the war with Iran, all of this is one package. And it's one package to stop what? The new paradigm from coming into being based upon Hamilton in economics and LaRouche, which the Chinese have adopted, the Russians are supporting, and other nations are adopting as well. And that's what they're really afraid of, because it's the end of this criminal financial system, which is a continuation of an empire that assumed control of the English-speaking world in 1763 with the rise of the British East India Company. That's the system that we're about to end. And end it, it will. Common stock investments have helped to make our country prosperous and powerful. Owning a share in American industry is like owning a share in the future of our nation. But remember John Q. There is a risk as well as an advantage in owning any kind of property. So get the facts before you put your money to work.